This is the American journalist Charlie Wolf and Gavin McFadgian, director of the Center for Investigative Journalism. Both of you are Americans, I should say. We so, are. Um, yes. uh, thank you very much for, for joining us tonight on what's a breaking news uh, story that's our top story. And just to, to give everyone the very latest, Bradley Mann has been found not guilty of this most serious charge, but he has been found guilty of 20 charges, a 20 out of 22 charges he's found guilty mm. of five espionage and five theft counts in terms of giving this information to WikiLeaks. So, Charlie, let's start with you. Is, is this is this justified, what he's been found guilty of? I think so. Think? I, I have a lot of faith in military justice, just to start. Of the 22 charges, 10 he pled guilty to. He didn't even plea bargain. He just pled guilty. I think the, he went in the defense, knew they were essentially on a loser from, from the way that they handled the case. Uh, they did, elected not to go before... Uh, I think it's called a panel, not a, a jury in the mm -hmm. military trial. Um, and it turned out pretty much, I think, as all would expect. The, the, the one main charge, the uh, aiding and abetting the, the enemy, I think the government was right to push that charge. I mean, it, obviously the court uh, thought so as well, or they wouldn't have allowed them to do it. But it was a bit of a stretch. Some would say it's an overreach. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But again, justice was served. He got off on that one. He was duly convicted on the others. And let's face it, he's not going to be walking out anytime soon. I think no, he could I don't be jailed. Think he for... should be buying any property. Right, okay, for at least 130 years, apparently. So, Gavin, how, how do you view this man? He, he's now a convicted felony, um, felon, I should say. Is, uh, but as a journalist, do you think that he is a, someone who's trying to do the right thing, or is he a traitor to your country, putting no, people's I, lives I, at risk? I, I would have the very strong view that, that he represented a lot of journalists and a lot of journalism in the sense that he thought that transparency was a good thing. Even in the military, even in, when there's yeah, classified absolutely. documents that can kill, well, can take lives. Well, they never have. I mean, that's How a, do you know a, that? A, well, because we've had now two years since all this, and the largest country on earth has spent a lot of money trying to find somebody who was hurt by these documents, and have found nothing. Even even though Osama bin Laden had some of these documents but, on but his computer. But everybody has them. So does every political leader in the world. So does so does Mr. Cameron has them. I mean, everybody has them. I mean, when you publish things openly in a newspaper, everybody reads it. And that's what he did. So you could blame them, but then you have to blame the press as well, because the press was absolutely and totally complicit in arguing every aspect of this case to, to, uh, to present this material in the public interest. And of nobody, by the way, who's read the material has ever felt that it was not in the public interest. Well, but, and freedom you know, of speech is in your, in yeah, your constitution. It was classified information. I'm under the understanding that whistleblowers are not allowed to release classified information. Bradley Manning took an oath and he signed documents and, and he swore certain allegiances when he was in the military. He wasn't a reporter. He wasn't a member of the press. And, and even giving it to Julian Assange at WikiLeaks is not what I'd consider giving it to CBS, NBC, or, or ITN. Would you have felt country. more comfortable if he'd given it to the New York Times well, or actually it was, a television uh, station? One of the things that I found bothersome uh, was the fact that when he gave it, for instance, to Julian Assange, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe The Guardian in the end had a problem in the fact that there were certain things that a proper newspaper would redact or act as a gatekeeper, uh, and Assange was putting things out willy-nilly, as, as Manning was also, again, taking the stuff. It wasn't like he was looking for malfeasance okay. or abuse of Let power. He just in? took a tranche yeah. of information. I think that this is a very controversial issue, because those of us who were connected to the release of those documents, as indeed I was on the Channel 4 program on, on the Iraq war logs, found the level of redaction was 35,000 names were taken out of these documents. There were no... Uh, crises of any kind, as far as we know. Nobody was hurt. Uh, the claims that this would be, be blood on the hands of every journalist. So would you be happy for every happened. military document to, to be open to Well, not the every do military document was encased here. What but would you be happy with that? Special. Do you understand why some mm. documents need to be classified? I think you could make a case for some of them. The, the, the definition of a hydrogen bomb, the, the ways in which people are going to be killed in some particularly unorthodox way, yes. But if you're talking about sergeants' reports of mortar rounds going off in near but, villages, yeah. that's a public issue. It's not mm. a private issue. I, th I think that there's a valid argument on what is and what isn't classified. I, I can agree fully there. I have to say, there. Charlie, some of the footage that we've seen of an Apache helicopter bombing a, a, a minibus mm. in Iraq, um, innocent civilians, it seems. Does, does but, the American public want to see that? And but a, that's and a not necessary. But remember, in a time of war, for instance, you think back to Abraham Lincoln, our greatest president, restricted the press. In, in this country, uh, I remember listening to the very first recording of Desert Island Discs. The whole thing was scripted to get past the censors. Now, I'm not calling for that today, but okay. we were, you know, yeah, <laughs> obviously. But we, we are in a situation of war, and I think you, you have to set a precedent that you can't, especially as a member of the military, just decide, 
that you're going to be the arbiter of the debate and you're going to decide what is and okay. what isn't classified. Um, you know, yeah, let's have a debate on what is classified, but as long as it is and you're in the military, you shouldn't be releasing it. I think there are two important questions. Is there precedent for this or not? There is. There are several enormous precedents in the past. There was an in, an, a wonderful journalist uh, called Jack Anderson who published mm -hmm. very secret military documents at the height of the Indo-Pakistani War. Nobody was prosecuted. There was no attempt to jail the person responsible. None of that happened. What's happened now is that the Obama administration is prosecuting more whistleblowers than every president in the United States right. together. Yeah. So very and quickly, that's astonishing. Love, unfortunately, last question, but Charlie, do you think that this man should be re will he released? Should he ever walk no, free? No, he's done some serious things. He was not a member of the press. He was a member of the military. So you think uh, he's, he should he's be jailed for oh, life? Yeah, he's going to do minimum 20 years, if not 40 or longer. Gavin, what do you think? I think he should be released and released immediately. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us tonight.